Epcot into a giant game of Trivial Pursuit. That's right, we're playing the ultimate game of trivia all over Epcot. Let the games begin. Okay, we're breaking up. This is it. I'll breaking up is hard to do. I'll miss you, friends. Bye! I'll miss you, friends, while I'm winning. I feel like I have a very hard disadvantage here because I'm the only one that's not played one of these trivia pursuit games yet. So maybe that will work in my favor? I don't know. Maybe just like being inexperienced for all this will actually kind of pan out. Um, but I think first we're gonna head on over to the Imagination Pavilion and start our first question over there. We are going to different locations in an attempt to get six different wedges. Whoever has all the wedges at the very end and answers the big final finale question will be the winner. So the most important thing today in this game for me is I was lent an umbrella by Miranda because the weather looks like it could get a little wild. And uh, the umbrella, when she handed it to me, I noticed that it's a Ben Sherman, which puts a lot of pressure on me because I'm a Ben Sherman fan. So the number one goal that I have in this game today is not losing Miranda's Ben Sherman. Beautiful, look how nice this umbrella, that's a nice umbrella. Ugh. All right, here we go. Each of these locations have a different category that we have to answer, but before we can even get into that location to answer uh, our wedge question, we have to answer a trivia question just, just to even enter. So uh, I started, uh, I'm starting with what I believe is going to be uh, one of the hardest categories, and that's parks around the world. Uh, so that is Cosmic Rewind, and in order to even get in, we gotta answer a trivia question about parks around the world. What was Disneyland Paris's original name? And I actually know this one because I'm a huge fan of the Imagineering story, the documentary on Netflix, as well as just learning a lot about behind the scenes, uh, especially as a cast member. Uh, so I love all behind the scenes things. And the original was Euro Disney. Let's head in to Cosmic Rewind. So I'm here, out. I'm in between Creation Shop, which is the biggest shop here in Epcot, and Connections Cafe, which is the um, Starbucks here. So my question. What's the name of the biggest ice cream sundae and what does it feature? I believe it is the kitchen sink at Beaches and Cream. Um, it features a ton of stuff, I wanna say four or five different kinds of ice cream, hot fudge, peanut butter, chocolate chip pieces. I think there's a whole brownie in it, sprinkles, a cherry, a ton of stuff. So that's what I'm, I'm just gonna voice type that to her. And that's what I hope it is. Oh, okay, it was. I thought it said, she said slay correct. I thought she said sorry. Okay, we made it into connections and creations. And I guess I'm just gonna go inside one. We got the first question um, and it is. What is the first attraction to feature audio animatronics? Enchanted Tiki Room, 1963 in Disneyland, and it is an amazing show to this day. It is still mind-boggling what they achieved in 1963 with the Enchanted Tiki Room. Now I have a wedge question, so thank goodness I'm finally <laughs> really allowed to be here inside of the land pavilion because I was a trader. I was uh, a squatter before, and now I have, um, I signed the lease. But now I need a wedge, and the wedge question is... How tall is Spaceship Earth? Because everything has to be under 200 feet in order to... Well, it used to be that you they had to... Uh, they didn't want to put flashing lights on top of uh, icons because it looked, you know, tacky and it distracted from the theming to see a light that was blinking to let pilots know that something tall was in the area. And anything over 200 feet requires uh, that sort of lighting element. 
but I'm going to say something like 185 feet because that's in the realm of the, the height of Cinderella Castle. Got that wrong. It was 180. We were so, 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 so close. Um, I think that the Imagineers decided to be even more conservative than, than I thought, and I think they probably made the right choice. So now we have to do uh, a thing. We have to review the menu at Garden Grill, and you already know that I'm a huge fan of Garden Grill, so let's go talk about Garden Grill. Okay, Quincy just texted us our very first question to get into the Imagination Pavilion, and our question is, what is the name and theme of Disney's newest announced cruise ship? For me, that's actually pretty easy. I have been following this one for quite some time. I'm really, really stoked about it. It's the Disney Destiny. And what I really love most about it is its theme because it's got a villains and a heroes theme and I'm having a hard time choosing which one I want to go with, so. Yes, we passed our first question, so that means I now have clearance to go inside the Imagination Pavilion. So once we're inside, we'll be able to go ahead with our wedge question. I know that Quincy's working something up extra hard for us. We've got to be challenged on our first one, so we've got to earn this first wedge. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is, uh, I think, one of my favorite coaster attractions, I think, in all of Walt Disney World. It's a mashup between rock and roller coaster because of the music, um, Space Mountain because of, you know, the outer space, and uh, Escape from Gringotts because of the ride vehicle that rotates 360 degrees. I'm a little nervous because we're starting off easier than anticipated, which means these questions are only, uh, only going to get harder, and... Uh, now I'm second guessing starting in around the world because I know these answers. The question was What California city is about the same size as Walt Disney World? I know it. It's, uh, and I get often confused with San Diego because I was like, ah, oh, San, blah, blah. No, it is San Francisco. It is the literally the, the size of San Francisco. Disney World is vast. It, it's, a, it's its own city. It's got its own gas stations and marketplaces and its it, uh, transportation systems. It's wild how big um, Disney World is, and the fact that we're able to do all the challenges that we are is just. Uh, it's we're very lucky, but also there's a reason that our legs are as tired as they are. <laughs> okay, but I'll send it in. Hopefully, we got the wedge got the wedge yes first wedge down oh no where am i gonna go oh where am i gonna go but okay she just sent my trivia question where can you find something named after italy's three active volcanoes in disney world okay i don't think it's trat that's at the boardwalk I have no idea. I don't think it's gelato. I think it's between the wine bar or Via Napoli, and I don't know. So I'm gonna go Via Napoli and hope for the best. Okay, I was right. It is Via Napoli, and it's because it's the ovens. They have massive ovens where they are brick pizza ovens. They're super nice and make the best pizzas. I love Via Napoli. Um, if you want to see a full review of it, let us know. And maybe we'll get to do that because I would love to. Um, but yeah, it's the brick ovens. Now the Imagination Pavilion is one of my favorite pavilions here inside of Epcot. It is also home to the Journey into Imagination that features our super fun purple dragon friend figment, the figment of imagination if you will. And it's a really nice easy going dark ride and at the end you have a lot of really cool creative fun just interactive play areas and a few meet and greets to enjoy. Okay, so our next question is- Which characters are on the stern of the treasure? For this one, because I know it so well, I'm gonna go with Peter Pan and Captain Hook. Okay, we answered that one correctly, which means we are on the move now for our next wedge. And I think for our next piece, we should go after the closest one here. Let's just kind of divide and conquer and go around. So we're headed to the land pavilion. Whew, if we don't get blown away first. 
All right, here is the plant-based lunch and dinner menu. So now there's a pulled pork with southern barbecue sauce. I don't know what this dish is. I haven't had it. It is replacing one of my favorite things to eat in Disney World. If you saw that review I did with Emma here where I uh, introduced her to the veggie loaf and we loved it. It was almost like a fried, um, it was like a fr fried risotto loaf with vegetables in it and it was served with these two sauces on top and it was really delicious. Um, and I'm finding out right now that it's not on and they removed it from the menu in December and replaced it with the pulled pork in quotes and I have not tried it yet. I definitely need to come back to, uh, to, to Garden Grill and uh, try this new menu because um, yeah, that's, that's what we do. <laughs> All right, well, I'm taking my Sunshine Seasons free refill soda with my receipt and I'm now exiting the land pavilion because I don't belong here anymore because I got that question wrong about the height of Spaceship Earth. How many of the totem poles in Canada are real? How many totem poles in the Canada Pavilion are real? I don't think I have any idea. Um, are none of them real? I'm just gonna say three. I don't think I don't even know if there are three totem poles in the in the Canada Pavilion, but this is my C answer. Task. Here we come, baby. The answer is one. Great. Good for you, Canada, and your one real totem pole. Now I can still go to Mission Space, but it's gonna really slow me down because now I have to um, <clears throat> now I have to do a task in order to enter Mission Space. So my task is is to show off the theming at the entrance to the ride. Oh, okay, that won't take too long. All right. The wind is really picking up. There is just like an added level of stress that there is going to be a major storm tonight. So this is another just like push motivation. I have a lot of anxiety around the trivia because I just want, I don't know that I know it all, but I need to have faith. I think I can do it. Team anxiety forever. And also part of team anxiety is reminding yourself you're capable. So we're going to figure it out. Moving over to Guardians. Let's see if I can get this entry question. What is the second park at Disneyland Paris called? Disney Studios Park. Uh, this one was kind of built out of necessity. I'm a huge fan of the Imagineering story on uh, Disney Plus. It's a really great show if you ever want to learn more about Disney history. And ironically, Disney owned that land and uh, they the first park did not do as well initially financially as they wanted it to, so they weren't really going to touch it. And then Paris, like the whole city country, was like, hey, we're gonna take this back if you don't use it. And so they had to build uh, what eventually became what I believe is called Walt Disney Studios Park. And it's, it's very fun. It's more for like older kids and it looks really cute. It has a crush coaster there. So hopefully, oh my gosh, you guys, I get to go there. Do you guys know that yet? Is that video out? I get to go there, I think. And yes, that was it. Okay, we're in Guardians. Uh, we technically can go into Treasures of Xandar if we want. If it starts raining, I will. But I'm gonna hang out here by the spaceship, which I can't remember the name of. Thank goodness this isn't Guardians trivia. Oh my gosh. So Quincy has asked us to call her the Trivia Master. I don't know. That's, that's quite an ask there, Quincy. Um, okay, whatever you say. Trivia master. How fast does Rock and Roller Coaster reach 60 miles per hour? That one's pretty tough for me because while I like to ride around the parks on occasion, I've not ridden Rock and Roller Coaster in quite some time. So 
I'm a little rusty on this one. I want to say it's just under three seconds, but I think that's what I'm going to go with is like, I don't know, 2.75 seconds. Okay, sounds like our hive mind worked because Quincy did accept our answer. It's technically 2.8 seconds, but she was like, yeah, you were very, very close to it. So I'll accept it. So right now we're entering the land and once we get inside, we can actually move on to our next wedge question and hopefully keep our streak going. Well, I found a nice place to sit at the Imagination Pavilion and now I'm gonna get a question because I need to be officially let in. I've got to check this text from Quincy. She is the game, uh, she's the trivia master. What three areas are coming to Tokyo Disney's Fantasy Springs? All right, so Fantasy Springs is, uh, is coming to Tokyo Disneyland and um, there's gonna be three areas, and one of them is based on Peter Pan, one of them is based on the movie Tangled, and one of them is based, of course, Frozen. Here in front of uh, Mission Space, it definitely gives you this um, almost Kennedy Space Center vibe where it's a lot of planets, it's a lot of orbs, uh, and yet this, they've, they've used, they've, they've tried to make it uh, otherworldly and futuristic, almost as if you're entering like a, a space museum, especially because they have quotes all over the walls uh, from different astronauts. Let's go see some of these uh, quotes. Oh, not just astronauts, philosophers as well, and authors, they're really just talking about space. Look upward from the, uh, for, look upward from this world to the heavens, Plato. Uh, oh, oh, Galileo. There we go. Charles Lindbergh, an aviator. Up, oh, T.S. Eliot, a poet. We shall not cease our, exp our explorations. I agree. I agree, T.S. Eliot. Oh, she sent me the question and I don't think I know it. How many times has the drawbridge on Sleeping Beauty Castle in Disneyland been lowered? Once on opening day, for sure, as just like a part of a fun thing. <sighs> I don't see why they ever would have closed it again. I'm gonna go two. My gut's saying two. Maybe it's three. Actually, it could be six. I, I'm two. I submitted two. Oh, it's right, it's right, it's right. <gasps> It's right! Okay, I started sweating. Oh, okay, I got a wedge. I have two wedges. Oh, oh. Okay, I need to calm down. I gotta get serious about my trivia. We're in the land and we're ready for our next wedge question. So Quincy has sent over. When was Pepper's ghost developed? is pretty tough. I am a huge buff for all things Haunted Mansion and I love the Pepper's Ghost effect but I have to admit I'm a little shaky on that specifically. I know it's not the 1900s because it's a rel relatively old uh, effect and done pretty minimalistically. I can't see it being the 1600s maybe even the 1700s so we're gonna go with the 1800s and hope that we're right. That one was right, so that means we earn a wedge for the land. Hooray! And we get to move on to our next land. So I think we're gonna go to the seas next to kind of try and play it safe. Otherwise, we need to answer another question crossing over into another land to get to our final destination. So what is the name of the limited time show coming to Epcot this summer? This is 
very, very, very exciting. Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote the music and lyrics for uh, the film Encanto. Um, that is the same man who wrote In the Heights and Hamilton, two shows that um, I'm, <laughs> I'm obsessed with. The world is obsessed with them. I'm kind of, I was, I saw um, In the Heights off-Broadway before it moved to Broadway and Mandy Gonzalez was in it and a couple years later I painted her green for a year at Wicked and she's still my friend and I go see her um, here in Epcot do the, uh, the Broadway, Disney on Broadway concerts during the Festival of the Arts. All of that is to say that it's an exciting show that is coming. It's an Encanto show that's coming to Epcot. And it is called uh, Celebration. No, it's like, you can't make it French. Celebration, Celebration Encanto. I made it French. Maybe I'm wrong because of that. Yay! <laughs> we officially got it correct. I got it. We got a wedge. We got a wedge. We got a wedge. It's still beautiful out here. You know, it's Epcot. Rain or shine. You know, the quiz master is really a tough cookie. That that Quincy and her insistence on being called the quiz master. Okay. <laughs> but you know I'm gonna do it because I love Quincy. So I'll call her whatever she wants. She could be the she can be the trivia queen. All right, we're gonna head into the Mission Space cargo bay, uh, which is basically the, the gift shop of Mission Space, as well as the interactive uh, area where it's actually called the Advanced Training Lab, and uh, that's where uh, there's some fun gaming things in there. Uh, you can you know help learn or you can learn how to be an astronaut even further. How did they create the replica of the Liberty Bell in Magic Kingdom? Now I do know it actually has historical like meaning. I just don't remember exactly what. Um, oh, quick multiple choice. Quick <laughs> over over 100 sketches of the actual using this. That's it. That's it. Um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure it's it. I'm pretty sure they used the exact same cast as the Liberty Bell. In fact, I think they made a whole bunch using the, uh, a whole bunch of replicas using that same cast as the Liberty Bell. So I'm going to lock in my answer as using the same cast as the original Liberty Bell. I don't know if that's right. Yes, correct. Second wedge. Second wedge. Let's get out of here. I feel confident. I'm just going to kind of keep going in a circle. Um, next one is going to be Mission Space, which I can't even remember what this category is. Um, but we're here and we're going to hope for the best. So I've asked for my question. If my taskmaster could give me said question, that would be awesome. I'm actually not going to play that anymore. That's really weird. Walt Disney has two windows on Disney World's Main Street. One is above the train station. Where is the other? the plaza. I cannot remember if it's Plaza Ice Cream or Plaza Restaurant. She did ask for specifics. I voted, oh, I voted Plaza Ice Cream and it's Plaza Ice Cream. That's sick. Oh, I don't know if you guys remember this. If you remember this, you were an OG, but we played a crazy scavenger hunt right when I first started filming and I couldn't find that window and I, I'm pretty sure I lost because of that. Um, if you remember that, that's really cool. So I'm glad I remember. Thank you to losing but then eventually it helping you grow and learn tip as you can see the land is right behind me which means we're ready for our next question quincy set us up with how long did walt disney voice mickey mouse you know i'm actually super embarrassed right now to tell you I'm not quite certain of the answer for this question. So I'm gonna go with maybe two years, question mark, and hope that we're right. Bad news, friends. I was way off. Uh, Walt actually voiced Mickey for almost 20 years. How crazy is that? 
Whew. That's a long time. So because I missed, we have to do a task to get into the land now. And that is to do the Dory scavenger hunt. So come along, let's go hunt us some uh, Dory stickers then. Back to the land. Oh, that synthesizer. That 1982 synth, synth is, oh, what does it do to me? It like massages my soul. Back in the land, we're getting it right this time, I hope. Or we're gonna spend the whole day coming back and forth to the land pavilion. Maybe that's not a bad thing. <laughs> Maybe that means I'm the winner. <laughs> what two cents can you smell on Pirates of the Caribbean? I recall a time when you could smell burning, which I think was in Disneyland. I think here the two that you can smell are kind of a tobacco smell and also like a wine or a rum, like a rum wine kind of smell. I'm gonna call it wine because it smells fruity. It's fruitier than rum does not smell on its own fruity at all. So I'm gonna say wine and tobacco. There is a fire smell somewhere, but I don't remember smelling it here. There's a big burning scene in Disneyland. I have literally never heard that. So this is, I'm, I've learned something really cool um, that the one of the two scents that you smell on Pirates of the Caribbean is banana rum. Cool. Um, we're still wrong. So let's go downstairs and do our punishment is that what it's called challenge it's a punishment come on what helps rotate the popcorn drums in disneyland and i think we're sh i think the trivia master is talking about the little the little ca characters like but i don't know what they're called Are they, um uh, the little characters, pop, the pop, the popcorn characters, popcorn pals. <laughs> I would name them that. I think that's a fun name. Ah, it's not right. Rank all the sodas at Club Cool is my task interconnections. I knew, I knew I'd be going to Club Cool. Oh my gosh, and it's spring break, so there's no telling how crowded it's gonna be in there. When rain falls on Spaceship Earth. Where does it go? Now this one's actually really neat. I think this is really cool trivia if you don't already know this. But the way that Spaceship Earth is designed is it has, um, I can't think of the word, like a drainage system so that way all the water doesn't pile underneath when it rains. And it goes to somewhere else. It's either the land greenhouses, the seas for treatment, World Showcase Lagoon, or the parking lot. I feel like it would go to the land greenhouses because the land, living with the land talks about how they recycle water. So I'm going to say land greenhouses. Oh, the correct answer is World Showcase Lagoon. That's fair and makes a lot of sense. Um, and my task is to ride Mission Space, which, ooh. <laughs> Oh, okay, she didn't specify which mission space and green is 10 but mission space orange is 95 minutes So I'm definitely going on green which is my preference anyways If you don't really know what mission space is it's kind of neat It's like a flight simulation ride um, and there's two sides orange which is more intense and then green which is less intense Obviously orange is a lot more popular with that 95 minute wait But green is a lot more kid friendly and this one I will say is so bad about motion sickness. So if that's something that you kind of deal with, getting dizzy, motion sick, anything like that, uh, definitely, definitely be cautious of this one. And if you really want to try it, go green, no question. And I'm also gonna go green. So here we go. Now, if you've never actually done this scavenger hunt before, there's a little booklet you can pick up right as you're coming off of the um, Seas with Nemo and Friends ride here into Sea Base. I'm gonna show it to you. I have small children that have been visiting Disney World for decades, literally, and they're not so small anymore. Uh, but it's one of the most fun things that we do here. It's free, so let's go pick up our booklet. Club Cool is a merchandise location where you can buy many uh, Coke-related products, merchandise. Um, 
but they also, but in, oh wow, it's pretty empty. But within here, they actually have uh, these fun soda trying stations from uh, different countries around the world. Worst is actually not Beverly, it is China. Okay, this is China. It says that it's um, a sour plum flavor, but it is not. And actually, oh my. Whoa. All right, we're back at Sunshine Seasons. I'm so happy to be here and review the menu because I swear this is like probably my favorite place to eat in Epcot, which is crazy because this is a, a, a park full of incredible options. But this station offers uh, sweets and you can go over here to the case and see there's a selection of baked goods. Um, everything looks everything looks great. I'm sure you will love them. Here we go, we're finding Dory. You can see her sticker right here, but the blue tang is what we're after. And I know Dory, the blue tangs hang out in these tanks. There's Dory. Hi Dory, we found you. So we've earned our sticker now. Second worst is actually Beverly. I'm completely alone. Me and the crew are gonna fly Hi, this thing. Welcome aboard. I'm the engineer. All right, this is always a very popular station. This is where I get my Mediterranean vegetable sandwich. Yep, here he is. He's a little scary looking. But we found the eel. Let's go find the seahorses right now. Oh, there's one. There he is. Found you, buddy. Third worst for me is Joy. It just tastes like a, it always tastes like a flat, a flat, a flat sweet soda, which who likes flat soda? It's definitely just a cucumber sprite. It's refreshing, but it's still like cucumber. So that's my personal opinion. Six is Viva from Aldova. And now we've earned our manatee sticker. Here. Yeah, can you see him? Oh, there he is. All right, over here at, at this station, less, uh, not as much of a line, I'll say. This this is really happening over here. And the runner-up is Madagascar. Oh, there he is. He's right there. Can you see him? All right, we found the turtle. All right, now we can move on to our wedge challenge. And my number one, Dominican Republic Country Club. This place is awesome, and... Uh, I truly, truly love coming here. I truly love eating here. Okay, I did the task, which means uh, I can head in. Definitely slowed me down, uh, but that's okay. We're gonna head to head into Creation Shop because connections in Creation Shop count as one kind of land situation. So we are in Creation Shop, which is basically the Emporium of Epcot. This is your one-stop shop for all merch. Uh, at Epcot. We're talking um, all your IPs, Star Wars, Marvel, Garden of the Galaxy, as well as 2024 Disney merch, ears, lounge flies, you know, the works. They got it here. What could you once borrow when eating at the restaurant in Cinderella Castle? Which I'm leaning towards tiaras and crowns because that makes the most sense, but because that is the place you can meet characters. I want to say disposable cameras. You can't borrow disposable cameras. Seat cushions, maybe seat cushions. That's a, I know it's not medieval costumes. I'm gonna say seat cushions. It was medieval costumes? Well, I'm gonna have to come back to this one. Um, before I leave, I have to find my task, since I didn't get the question right. I have to find a task, I mean, I have to find a souvenir for one of my opponents. Emma and I, we've been spending a lot of time together. Literally, I had, just had the best morning in Magic Kingdom. I cannot tell you, we just laughed the entire time. It was so fun. So I'm gonna find something for her. It's this Ahsoka outfit. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's obviously a long line shirt, but it's Ahsoka, I am no Jedi. And it's all one piece, so this all fits, to, this is all one piece together. Uh, and it's not actual denim, it looks like denim, but it's uh, actually a soft, um, a soft material, which I'm obsessed with. Which actress appears in the pre-show video for Mission Space in Epcot? actually in a series called 911 Lone Star, which is a Brad Falchuk and uh, Ryan Murphy show. Her name is Gina Torres, uh, and she's a very good actress, and I think she does a great job in the pre-show. 
All right, thank you, Gina Torres. We got it right. And uh, now we are headed to the, the seas. <laughs> I'm a land pavilion kind of guy, but we're going next door to the uh, formerly the Living Seas uh, to see what fresh Hades <laughs> awaits there under the sea. Okay, we have made it to our wedge question. Are you ready? What was the name of Walt's very first named animated character? And I've only ever heard of Mortimer and Oswald the Lucky Rabbit, so I'm gonna go Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Unfortunately, the answer was Julius the cat, which I really thought was just an answer that she swung in there for posterity to give me four multiple choices. Whew, that wind is gusty. Um, so now we have to do a task and we'll have to come back to this land and try and for the wedge a little bit later. Um, but our task right now is go and say hi to our favorite sea creatures. So let's go. I get to introduce you to my favorite one in here and we've not even seen them yet. So I'm really excited to do that. These are them. Say hello to the dolphins. Hello dolphins. I got a chance to say hello to them the other morning whenever I was out here kind of perusing Epcot. It was so great. All right, pulling up to the seas, we have been given our entry question. Which Disney princess has a star on the Walk of Fame? The only thing that I can think of is it has to go, we have to go back in the day and we have to go mind blowing, okay? They gave a special Academy Award to Snow White because it was so groundbreaking. At the time, there was nothing like it. And so I feel like it had that sort of momentum and energy around it. And that I think it continued into ju not just the Academy Awards, but past the Academy Awards and maybe into the Star on the Walk of Fame. This is a total guess, but I'm going Snow White and we'll see what happens. I see you, competition. Hey! Hello! Uh, we're just, we're, we don't have an alliance. I want to be very clear about that. Uh-huh. No, no, of course uh -huh. not. We don't have an alliance. The wink, scout, wink. is there something in your eye? <laughs> no, it's in your all's voices. What are you? Do you have an alliance? Are you answering questions for each other now? Okay, so without knowing it, uh, we both told Quincy we were headed to the seas. No alliance, um, but I have to go figure out what my entry question is, so best of luck again. You too, I'm stopping here. I I'm go I'll go over there by the stroller parking. Which title character from a Disney film never speaks? Definitely know this one. Uh, I was back and forth because I was like, Wally, no, he definitely speaks. Uh, he goes, Wally. Um, I thought about Bambi for a second. I was like, no, Bambi, I think, I think he talks to Thumper. Uh, but then it occurred to me, it's definitely Dumbo. I know this because, uh, baby mine, don't you cry. Baby mine, um, uh, from the song that the mom sings to uh, Dumbo. Uh, is something as a song that uh, we sing to Violet. Um, it's just one of our favorite songs uh, just because it's very sweet and emotional and blah blah blah. <laughs> the answer is Dumbo. Got that question correct. Thrilled. Headed into the Seas Pavilion. What is the name of the sorcerer in Fantasia? It's Disney backwards, I'm, I think. I'm pretty sure that's his name. Yensid, if it's not that, I don't know. It is Yensid. So now we're gonna see if I 
Well, Sage is not out here, so I'm assuming he already made it inside, and I'm going inside to the seats to find out what's happening. This is gonna be crazy. If he gets this wrong and then I immediately get this wrong, I could have like a kind of really bad punishment because they rotate through. What is Donald Duck's middle name? Of the uh, selections, the only name that means anything to me is Fauntleroy because of the film called Little Lord Fauntleroy. And um, I don't think it is his name, but it would be really funny if it is, and I'm going to say that it is his name. Okay, we got it. It was Fauntleroy. <laughs> His middle name is Fauntleroy. That's really funny. You should look up the movie Little Lord Fauntleroy. He has a page boy in it, the kid, that plays Little Lord Fauntleroy, and um, he's very effete and, um, you know, it's something to do. Manatees are right there. Okay, the question is... What feat of animation from another Disney movie did animators study to create the movement of the ocean in Moana? I think Frozen is a little too on the nose. It, it's not as movement heavy, uh, like the ice, uh, you know, the snow drifts. I think rivers and cars didn't play enough of a role in cars to really be it. The crowds in Zootopia, like, that, there, there's something to that. I remember the big crowd scenes, especially during the concert. But I feel like hair played an essential role in Rapunzel, obviously, and in order to you know, take inspiration from that, they would, have, they would have had to have been inspired by, wow, this hair movement is really authentic, so I'm gonna go hair? I literally cannot believe I answered that correctly. When I watch game shows, I'm always like, stop, stop talking it through. Just say the answer. We just wanna know the answer, but there, there might be something to talking it through, but I will also say, talking it through could send you down a bad spiral where you're just, where you get mixed up between too many answers, which is what happened with the, with the uh, Cinderella's Royal Table question. Okay, we're headed to the land. We gotta, before we get, before we even walk into the land, we gotta do our land entry question. Iconic attractions is the category. It should be okay. It should be okay. What were Mickey Mouse's first words? I know that it's hot dog. I texted back hot dog if it's not hot dog. I'm gonna feel silly. But I'm pretty sure it's hot dog. And I wanna I wanna know that. He says hot dog, hot dog, twice. I'm pretty sure. What is happening with this? I look like I'm a mad scientist. Correct. Thank goodness. Um, Disney animation throughout many years is not always going to be my best topic, but this one I did know. So thank goodness for that. Hot dog indeed. Now I think we're going to move on to the land pavilion. It's right here. Um, I'm, we're, we're trucking along. We're halfway. I think that everybody's pretty neck and neck at this point. Um, so we're going to see, hopefully. Okay, got my, got my entry question. I'm about to walk up to the land. Question is, what is the first attraction to feature audio animatronics? I can tell you without a doubt, uh, the first, oh wait, oh, that almost got me. I almost said Tiki Room. Wait, is it Tiki Room? Wait a minute. Oh no, I'm, my, see? Oh, I just, I just went on this rant about gonna talk it through, but now talking it through is making me question myself. So Great Moments with Mr. Lincoln stars, uh, you know, an audio animatronic of President Lincoln uh, and giving his address. You can still find that at Disneyland, but Tiki Room. But... All right, I am officially submitting Tiki Room. I think that's, I gotta go with my gut. Yes. All right. Done. <laughs> Into the land we go. We're on the move. We're headed towards the land pavilion. Um, so she went ahead and texted me my entry since we're chatting. She's like, As you can learn on Kilimanjaro safaris, what are elephants afraid of? I think it's bees. <laughs> 
but maybe that's just like a really stereotypical trope I've seen in animation and media. It is bees. Okay, it's bees. So now we're gonna go into the lamp pavilion. How many candles are on the birthday cake in the Haunted Mansion ballroom? I definitely, I've definitely seen, there are definitely candles on the birthday cake because uh, one of the ghosts is blowing out the, I don't think there are 99 because that would be a lot. 31 is a lot too. I'm leaning towards 13. Yes, that is correct, that is right. Oh man, I feel like I'm doing way better at this version of Tri Trivial Pursuit than I was at Magic Kingdom. Okay, to Imagination Pavilion. Let's see if this is gonna make or break me. This one is pretty, I think this category is hard. It's iconic Disney attractions. And there's so many iconic attractions technically that this could be anything. So let's see what the question is. Which was the first US president to provide his voice for a Hall of Presidents animatronic? Ah, <laughs> I have no idea. I feel Bill Clinton. I have no idea. That's something that is really neat that I cannot wait to learn about. Oh, it's right. <laughs> it's right. It's Bill. Y'all, I'm sweating. I truly think that luck is on my side today. Hand to my heart, I did not know that. Heck yeah, y'all. That's crazy. Okay, we have four we have four wedges. We gotta get serious. We need to leave. Okay, I'm going into connections creations. We'll get our entrance question. What helps rotate the popcorn drums in Disneyland? Um, they're characters. Um, I think they call them popcorn personalities. Um, they're different in different areas. Uh, the one that comes to mind off the top of my head is the uh, abominable snowman inside of the Matterhorn. Got it wrong. Um, they're called Roasty Toasties, which now I remember I've heard that, but also heard popcorn personalities. Okay, I'm stopping right here because just beyond me is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. You can see that's our next area that we're headed to, but Quincy's already given us our next question. And our next question is, where can you find a basketball hoop inside a Disney attraction? quite sure I know I'm thinking long and hard on this one let's talk it out okay um I want to say figment because figment kind of like balls himself up there for a while but like it's a bouncing ball but I don't I'm not remembering a basketball hoop but on spaceship earth there is a scene where Steve Jobs or his likeness is in front of a uh, garage like a home garage and the garage door is up but most people have basketball hoops above their garage so I'm gonna go and say spaceship earth garage let's hope that that's right my Walt Disney World loving brain just got me in so much trouble because it was the Matterhorn over in Disneyland and that's terrible I should totally have known that um, that being said I now have to do a task and that is to find a funky mirror. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure that I know exactly where to go. So come along, let's go find us a funky mirror. Um, but anyway, tea. Oh, and tea, that's a kettle. Um, tea, pot. Tea pot, that looks like a teapot. Look at that teapot set. That's a nice tea set, that's beautiful. I made it over to Imagination Pavilion. I'm not inside yet, I don't have the question, but I can tell you it's starting to rain. And I really hope that this does not like monsoon on this. But you can never really, you can plan for Florida weather, but sometimes Orlando just likes to be silly ha ha. And I think maybe it's silly ha ha right now. 
always bring your rain gear and follow all their style if you'd like some tips and you know i love it i had to vlog i'm sorry it's my child i love that thing what is replacing dinoland usa wind is really getting to me and I saw a stroller start rolling and I was gonna catch it. You didn't need to know all that. I'm sorry. They're gonna replace it with, I'm pretty sure, Southern America's. We don't know exactly what that's gonna be yet, but their blue sky ideas, like the things that they're teasing us with, um, is stuff like Indiana Jones, Encanto, all that cool stuff. And see, it is Southern America's. I will see you inside the Imagination Pavilion. Meet me inside. What is the name and theme of Disney's newest announced cruise ship? Uh, we'll go inside because I know the answer. All right, we'll go inside. I think. Uh, can we go inside? I don't know. Uh, I know the answer without a doubt because I'm so excited. This is the one. This is the theme that I would pick out of any of the cruise themes. It's heroes and villains, and it's destiny. I'm so excited. Okay, we're waiting for our wedge question. I think uh, the reason I am so excited about heroes and villains on the Destiny is because <clears throat> I think you can't have a hero without there being a villain. There is, you know, uh, there, there can be no story without conflict and what creates conflict? Villains. So I think there's really great storytelling opportunities, both thematically, just like in bars and lounges and the, and the <clears throat> restaurants. Uh, and as well as some of their live entertainment offerings. So I'm really excited to see what the uh, Destiny brings and I will de that's that's one that I will definitely take the time for. Name three original characters on Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Um, I'm very excited about this. I know one is gritty because I t did like a tag yourself thing on my Instagram and I tagged myself as Gritty. I know one is Papa because I'm pretty sure I told Quincy that I think she is Papa. And the other one is Sebastian. I'm 99.9% .9 sure of these because I was in love with Sebastian. If, if these aren't right, I don't know anyone. But there's been a lot announced, like a lot. <laughs> correct, correct. I would like to thank Gritty, Sebastian, and my papa. That was cool. Okay, now this means I'm gonna have to go back to World Celebration, see if I can get that one right, because I might not be able to get that one right. And if I'm correct, I only have mission space left? There's no way that's right. Okay, I just saw Emma. We're gonna have to rapid fire these questions because all she has left is the one that she missed. All I have left is the one that I missed, which means I'm gonna have to rapid fire this question. What is the theme of the store being added to the Haunted Mansion in Disneyland? <laughs> oh, I think I know this though. The, the reason I know this is because I just happened to be stalking the Allers Instagram. We were putting up a post and I was like, oh, what uh, what are the um, what are the writers doing? And one of the uh, all ears articles happened to be about the new Disneyland uh, Haunted Mansion store. It is the carriage, Leota's carriage house. It's the carriage house owned by Madame Leota. Madame Leota is the person in the, uh, the globe. <laughs> Madame Leota is the person in the um, uh, fortune teller crystal and definitely the carriage house I know this for a fact so if you want to know you know if you want to check out the all your site and you can do that there's a bunch of stuff you know about future the future of Disney past Disney as well as the best you know uh, planning tips and tricks for your time so visit all okay um, I have to go uh, I gotta Emma and I were, we're neck and neck here all right, so here's the stairs for Guardians. Here we are. There's the funky mirror. Woo -woo. There we are. Let's dance a little. Dance, dance, dance. All right, funky mirror dance is over. Okay, people, so many people. I can see 
I can see Mission Space and she's just texted me my question. So I'm, I'm, I'm moving, moving and grooving. What is the name of the T-Rex skeleton in Animal Kingdom? Oh, I know this one, it's Sue. It's named after someone, um, I think it's Sue, it's like, I can't, her name is Sue, Dino Sue. Okay, I got my question. If I get this right, I, th I think I could win. Someone else could be winning right now, I don't know. Disney Princess is, is left hand. Am I stupid? Is this my last wedge? I don't think I'm stupid. I don't consider myself to be. Which Disney Princess is left handed? Moana in my mind going like to test for the her wayfinder is that it no definitely not I don't think it's Merida or Tiana but I can't see how Merida sh I'm pretty sure Merida shoots her bow I don't know if it's Raya Tiana It's Tiana! <laughs> yes! Ah! Okay, did I win? Did I? I think I won. What detail can you find outside of Tony's Town Square? I think have I got a final wedge. Uh, what detail can you find outside of Tony's Town Square? I know this. The paw prints. Come on. I know this. Let me. Good, correct. Moving in. I'm a clown. I didn't win. I forgot. You have to have a final question. If I don't get it right, everyone else has a chance to answer, and then I get another chance. So I could still lose. Damn. I really thought I won. <sighs> okay. The rain's really coming. All right. I'll see you at Spaceship Earth. What Disney attraction was originally supposed to be a restaurant? Uh, Enchant the Tiki Room, Pies of the Caribbean, Hall of Presidents, Country Bear Jamboree. I know this, it is definitely the Tiki Room. Uh, they wanted uh, that to be a place where uh, birds would be above you singing while you were eating, enjoying your ice cream, your Dole Whip, or whatever they, they, they were gonna do at the time. And uh, they thought it would be, I, I, I believe the reason they took it away is because like, well, they don't want birds flying over you in case people get weirded out because they were so lifelike that they might poop on your food. So they decided to make it a show instead. Okay, we made it. I cannot believe I got so excited. I'm embarrassed. It's fine. We still have a chance. We're not out yet, but I also don't know if I'm the first person here. So I could be last, I could be first, and I just didn't know what was going on. So we're gonna find out. Okay, I made it to Spaceship Earth. Emma made it here before me, which means she has first chance at the question. Whoa, it's windy. If she answered it correctly, she wins, but if she doesn't, that means I get to answer the question. But well, you must be thinking. <laughs> okay. I'll go over there so I don't hear the question. Which Disney ride vehicles have received a police escort through Washington, D.C.? I do not get options because it's the final answer. Um, I don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. I'm going to say monorail. My good sir, I was wrong. What? Good luck. You're like, oh, I, if you didn't get, if you didn't get, I don't know how, okay. I think this is just something I don't know though, and I think it's probably pretty widespread knowledge. Okay. Do you know what it, like, I, you hear the question and then we'll talk after. Okay, all right, I'll, I'll, all right. Well, I have moved a little under, under Spaceship Earth because it is crazy rain and crazy wind. Okay, the question is, what, what ride vehicle got a police escort through DC? And it's either gotta be something classic or something huge intellectual property wise. I do remember seeing something about this and I feel like it's classic. So you're not gonna recognize a boat immediately. You might not recognize a teacup immediately, but you would definitely recognize Dumbo immediately. And something is like scratching in the back of my brain that it's gotta be like the Dumbo. 
It's gotta be the Dumbo Ride vehicle. Like, that is so classic disc. If it's not, it's probably the teacups. I'm gonna submit Dumbo. Yeah! I learned so much today. I learned a lot too. A lot today. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Great uh, job, pal. Great so job. And I have to say that the real achievement of the day for me was not losing Miranda's umbrella. Oh, winners and friendship. If you like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. Now go watch our first ever trivial pursuit over Magic Kingdom. Bye. Yeah.